So my name is Jiao Liu. Um, um, as Jiao said, I'm a first year PhD student at UOC. Um, so today I'm very happy to share my work called Coverage Guided Tensor Compatible Fuzzing with Joint IR Plus Mutation. Uh, we study how to perform fuzzing testing uh, to tensor compilers. So as the recent rise of uh, AI applications are largely powered by the underlying deep learning systems, deep learning systems compute uh, deep learning models, which can be logically represented as tensor compu computation graphs. And the first generation deep learning systems, such as PyTorch and TensorFlow are libraries. That this means each operator in computation graphs are mapped into single pre-compiled kernel functions and computed in its topological order. Since deep learning models are computational intensive, deep learning systems are constantly evolving to achieve higher performance, which brings us the second generation um, of deep learning frameworks, uh, which I call it compilation-based deep learning systems, such as the well-known Tensor Compiler TVM. So instead of leveraging pre-compiled general binary, Tensor Compilers not only rewrite a more efficient computer graph at the graph level, but, uh, but I use tensor IRs to perform various uh, low-level organizations as well, eventually generating high-performance target code. Um, so while tensor compilers bring better performance, the software stack becomes extremely deep and complicated um, that, may, that there might be many bugs in it. Um, sorry, it seems some people is joining, so. Hi, hey. Hi, I'm Le Shen from UCSD. Okay. Uh, yeah, nice to meet you. Um, so um, we just started well, we the presentation. Continue while people dive in. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's great. Sounds good. Yeah, thank okay. you. Um, okay. So while tensor compilers brings better performance, um, the software stack is becoming extremely deep and complicated. That means there can be many bugs in it. Therefore, our motivation is basically uh, to see how to automatically detect bugs in tensor compilers. Um, using fuzz testing. So to automatically generate test suits, uh, we first need to determine the interface of testing. So as is shown in the workflow of a, a typical tensor compiler, the graph level interface describes uh, the computer graphs in graph IR and use many graph level passes for optimization. There has been uh, several prior work um, talking about how to uh, test deep learning libraries at a graph level, basically generating various um, uh, graph uh, DM models. And uh, another interface is the tensor IR interface and its corresponding passes. This level of interface models various low level hardware primitives. And uh, our work, namely teaser, focuses on doing fuzzing testing at a low level. Um, and the main reason is that there is limited research context in this part and uh, TIR lowered from the graph level is only a subset of the whole IR space, which is insufficient to detect deep bugs. Okay, so let's first recap a, the typical workflow of coverage guided fuzzing. So, so in, this, in this pipeline, so the fuzzer will first initialize a seed pool with a set of initial test cases. Those initial test cases can come from, say, existing unit tests or some open source use code. By mutating the seeds, we expect the mutated test called mutants to um, bring us new coverage. So basically, we'll, uh, we'll instrument the coverage before and after excluding this, uh, this mutant. And we'll see if, we, if this mutant brings us a new, a new coverage. And if it brings us a new coverage, we say it's interesting and we'll add it to a seed pool. Um, and basically the only variable in this uh, fuzzing process is the time limit. So similar to the general fuzzing pipeline, teaser regards a pair of IR file and pass sequence as a test unit. And during mutation, we separately mutate the IR and the passes and observe the coverage feedback on instrument the program. Our oracles include um, runtime failure and result or performance differences between optimized and non-optimized binaries. And once we find a new test interesting, we just add it to the seed pool. So now we describe how we perform general IR mutation. So in this step, we use the whole IR program in its AST form. 
So we first randomly pick an AST node as the mutation target. We also collect the corresponding constraints, including the type constraints and the visible variables. Um, such constraints are used to help maintain partial semantic validity after mutation, so that those mutants, uh, those uh, test cases after mutation can be compiled. Um, we basically perform three types of general error mutations. So the first type is, is insertion. So for insertion, we can insert a compatible IR ingredient as a target node. So for example, here the target node is an end node and we, um, and we then choose a compatible um, IR ingredient, which is basically the, the, let, the let expression from the seed pool. And we replace the sub AST led by the previous end node uh, using the let, node, let, let subtree. And the second type of uh, our, our mutation is deletion. So for deletion, we simply shrink the sub AST from the, uh, for the target node. So for instance, we leverage a compatible sub AST beneath the end node, uh, which is the grid node. And then we use it to substitute the previous end node. Um, for the last type is basically node replacement. So we perform node replacement to only replace the target, target node with another type of compatible node. So one, one question here. So the, mm -hmm. the mutation you perform was only restricted to a single subtree of the AST, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, basically we just re uh, replace some exp um, expressions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, could you replace several subtrees together on the constraint? Um, so basically, like for each time, we just uh, perform like mutation mutation for, for once. So we just replace one expression. And if, if it finds us a new coverage, and then we can, we'll press net, we'll, uh, we'll perform mutation again, um, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. Uh, can I also ask like, uh, what is the purpose for the mutation? Is that create different programs or it's like uh, expressing yeah, so the program in just in a different way? Oh, you mean the purpose of mutation, right? Uh, yes. So the overall goal is to like we want to have various test cases because like for fuzzing we always want a lot of test cases a lot of new test cases um, to like trigger different code passes in the compiler. So for mutation basically we want to like uh, perform mutation to generate um, to get a new IR and okay. we want to make the uh, progress like kind of smooth so. So basically through mutation, we get a similar, but still different IR uh, than the previous one. Yeah. But uh, will the mutated IR has meaning or just a random program? Um, so, so here, we, as we, we will like maintain the constraint. So at least we want to make sure that the mutated IR is compatible. So the compiler okay. can, can at least compile it. Um, okay. but, if, but if we don't like uh, maintain the, semantic equivalence so that which just means like the mutated IR can have a different meaning mm -hmm. yeah okay okay yeah this is basically because we are doing differential testing we're not doing like metamorphic testing yeah. um okay so in addition to general IR mutation we also um mutate some specific IR patterns that the compiler is interested in um, since tensor compiler, uh, since tensor programs are mostly optimized in dense, um, dense loop computation of a big chunk of memory, uh, we basically target three IR patterns, including loops, memory, and threads. So, like as tensor compiler tend to optimize deep, deeply nested loops, so we first will mutate IR by artificially adding nested loop to warp statements. So as the as this example shows, we basically add two nested loops um, to wrap this um, statement. But more like different memory load store patterns have a have an impact on optimization strategies. Therefore, we also artificially mutate the memory patterns by changing the data dependency inside the loops. Yeah. So here, basically, we will change the indices and we'll also like mutate the const um, the constant variable into um, a into another uh, memory accessing pattern. 
Um, and lastly, we the, the tensor compiler also models hardware threads to maximize the performance possibility. Accordingly, we can assign different number of threads to the to compute some loops, and we can also like change, like um, we can also like bind the iteration variables to different uh, thread assets, so that uh, which which is basically the thread bindings. So in this way, we can also trigger various um, optimization um, behaviors uh, for the compiler. So uh, now we question. Uh, yeah. Is there any constraints? Constraints. Um, so so actually we're doing so 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 the constraints we consider is basically to make sure the program is compatible, but uh, it is true that we may generate, uh, okay, we may generate a, a program that makes no sense, which means it can compile, but uh, if we just execute it, there may be some like out of, uh, memory out of band errors or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I get you, thank you. Yeah, um, so I think it is, so, so, so if we want to like uh, make sure that to, to generate verified program that is executable without let's say crashes, um, we may need like extra modeling. Um, we need the extra effort to, to model this. Um, um, and uh, I think in this way, we'll get uh, like a, a better Oracle basically. We, we need to like, uh, we can assume that, okay, the generated program when we execute it, it will not fail. Uh, but it requires extra effort. Yeah, so it's kind of a trade-off. Yeah, but, but here we basically want uh, are more interested in testing, you know, the compilation phase. We want to make sure the compilation phase is uh, is reliable. Yeah. Okay, so now we know how to mutate IR and the past sequence individually. So, so by mutating past sequence is very simple. We just randomly generate a past sequence. Um, so the next question is how to mutate them jointly, given that like coverage has different sensitivity to each of them. So if we always mutate IRs, the problem is that um, only limited pass combinations are tried, compromising possible new coverage. On the other hand, if we only mutate pass sequences, the limitation is that mutating pass sequence frequently is less coverage efficient than mutating IR frequently. This is because like the IR the IR side basically has a much larger search space than the uh, than the combination of um, of past sequences, and in addition, the randomly generated past sequences might also be illegal or makes no sense to fail the compilation, slowing down the fasting process. Uh, a small question here: uh, mm -hmm. I think that there are very strict dependencies between the uh, passes in yeah. the or QN. So, do you guarantee the Dependency. Um, this is a very good question, and uh, I think um, so. So this might be related to the implementation. So at least for TVM, mm -hmm. um, the pass infra infrastructure is that uh, like for every pass, it has a field which is, which is required pass. This means that okay, like when you write a pass, you need to specify the required pass, um, the required passes, and uh, the the basically the pass executor or the pass planner will first execute the required pass before executing you know the current pass so mm -hmm. but, but this um i think basically tvm wants to ensure that uh, okay like like we can resolve the past uh, past dependencies automatically but in practice there are always like counter cases that although you model the required passes um the program or the or when you uh, apply the past sequences in a different way, it may fail. Uh, so we'll also add some support to um, to make um, to try to have valid past sequences, and uh, we will show it later. Cool. Okay. So so our proposal is basically to apply coverage guided evolutionary evolutionary mutation. So there are basically two. Oh, sorry to design incentives. Um, so one big idea is that we should always prefer IR mutation than pass mutation, since uh, IR mutation has a large search space and is more coverage efficient. 
Um, and we also want to avoid uninteresting IR path sequence pairs. Um, an uninteresting test case is a test case that does not bring new coverage or cannot be compiled. Um, so if a so so here, like if if a if a test case cannot be compiled, is basically um, the fault of the path sequence. And the solution is to leverage an interleaving factor like NMAX to control the frequency of uh, IR pass mutation. Um, so here is a very simple example. So say that we have the, the, uh, the NMAX, which is two, and the father selects a new seed from the seed pool um, whose N uh, will have another factor N, uh, which is zero. That means we'll initialize n as zero for a new set. Uh, since n is smaller than a max, and uh, we will say, okay, next step we will choose our mutation. Um, but the but in the first round of our mutation, we found that mutant does not bring us new coverage. Therefore, we increment n by one. So now n is basically one. So in the in the next round, so in the next round n is one, which is, is still smaller than a max. So we'll still choose IR mutation in the next run. And it's still is it, it and the mutant is still uninteresting. So we add a add a one to n, making the two. And in this step, like like this this if statement goes to the fourth branch. Um and uh, and then we will choose like pass mutation. So in this way, in this situation, we will only mutate the pass, we will not mutate IR anymore. So now we will perform, uh, we'll, and now we find the, the mutant of the past mutation is interesting. Therefore, we will add it to the seed pool and reset n to zero. Um, okay, so before evaluation, um, I, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to like uh, further answer like the last question. So, so here, so here as, our, as one of our design incentive is like, we want to avoid uninteresting test case Uninteresting also means like the the path sequence is not compatible. So as long as we always include um, we always include interesting test cases, and the interesting test case can make sure that okay the path sequence is at least compatible. So we have so the CD pool always maintains valid path sequences, and uh, by performing um, by performing path mutation, we would have a like similar path sequence but still different. Um, and we assume that in this way we can always find a similar path, uh, and we can in this way we can always find the similar path sequences. And another thing is that uh, like pass, um, the frequency of pass mutation is is smaller than IR mutation. Therefore, we will we will mostly mutate in the IR, not mutating the passes. And the passes are already uh, valid. Therefore, like for most times, we will have valid pass sequences. So uh, you will figure out those invalid path sequences, right? Okay. Um, so can, um, I would say yes or no. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, can, what, what um, do you mean by avoid uninteresting? Is that? Yeah, this is because we will always, we'll only include interesting test case in the seed pool, right? And every time we will just perform mutation based on one seed from the seed pool. And we can guarantee that seeds from the seed pool contains valid path sequences. Okay, got it. Yeah. Or maybe I just uh, described it in a very complicated way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so next we can just go to the evaluation. So the, the most important metric in all Bug finding papers, I think, is is bug finding. Yeah. So basically, like during like six months of bug finding, um, we have we have found like 40, 49, 49 bugs reported to the community, where thirty seven has been confirmed and twenty five twenty five has been fixed. And we also like try to hypothesize like for all the confirmed bugs, can previous um fathers or previous um testing tools find those bugs. So we we'll basically compare it with three or with four um, with four baselines. So the first baseline is called Lemon, basically a graph level um, a DM model generator. So it will test uh, the compare at the graph level. Um, and the, 
and the lemon can also find the most bugs we found because it's it's doing fast testing at the graph level, and we can control many lower APIs um, in the in the low level. And uh, another work is TVM first. TVM first is a I think it's the first TVM fuzzer um, in the open source. And, and it, it basically just generates random TI expressions. And uh, it can only like find, it can only find like 16% of bugs we find. Um, and this is mainly because it only models the IR and it cannot model the passes. And it's, our modeling is also not as complete as ours. Um, and the third one is a very, is a very general binary fuzzer called libfuzz um, by LVN. Um, so by 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 evaluating libfuzz, libfuzzer will basically uh, will basically will um, will basically will convert the uh, TR files uh, TRs into its its test files, and we just let the libfuzzer to miss this binary. So. So because like Leap Father has no idea about the grammars or semantics of the, of the um, of the TIR, so its mutation is mostly invalid and it's very hard to find any. Um, it's very hard for it to generate any like valid uh, test cases. So this this means that even though it's a found bugs, it's hard to report report the bug to the community, right? Um, I mean like. Okay, I mean, like live father basically are testing the parsing side because oh. it may it may always generate some random strings or something like that. Yeah, which which does not follow the semantic or grammar requirement by by TV, by TVN. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, and I will also like uh, try to evaluate teaser by only using our mutation, um, and. In this way, like we found that like half of the bugs can will be will be shallow, will be silent, will be silenced because uh, because like we found the pass mutation is very important to um, to find those uh, bug to find those bugs in the IR. Um, and here are like two selected examples, um, uh, basically bugs in TVM. So like one bug, one bug is. It's basically because like uh, so it's like TV, um like TVN uh, so TVN's pass infra infrastructure uh, like assumes that uh, like for every pass it will not uh, like uh, like write the input module uh, because you can see that the, the input module is basically like uh, uh, marked as constant but uh, but like uh, the TVN's imp implementation has some has some like uh, hacks to allow to allow like a uh, mutation to allow mutations on constant variables. So 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 this pass called the two basic two basic block normal form, even though the input mode uh, is a constant variable. Um, the the and uh, the this this pass will actually like write or modify the data structure behind the mode. So. So, which is which is illegal, and and the fix is basically to perform a deep copy, um, to copy the to copy the input. Um, and the next bug example is basically, uh, due to the missing of boundary checks. So, so even though we found that uh, we is in the scope variable, but uh, we is a, so we is a vector, but we can be empty. So, so if we simply like a so if we simply call is uh, so if we simply call is uh, call is last uh, um, element, so it may crash. Um, the next thing we evaluate is is coverage effectiveness. So we evaluate different buzzers uh, over uh, over four hours, and the coverage metric we use is basically um, the LVM CFG H coverage uh, for the C plus plus code in in TVM. And we can find that uh, um, our our father is can achieve like one point seventy five higher coverage than the second best baseline, which is TVM first. We also conducted uh, ablation study to uh, to prove that uh, each of our components is useful to boost the coverage. 
okay, this is the last slide. So to, su to sum up, um, so our work basically uh, implements a teaser, a tensor compiler father. We perform general and domain specific IR mutation and pass mutation. Then we perform coverage guided evolutionary fuzzing to guide the to um, to guide the in interleaving process of pass mutation and IR mutation to lead, leading to high coverage effectiveness. And uh, our software is also open source on GitHub and uh, and the Docker. And our artifact is also evaluated. Yeah. So that's all. Um, I'd like to take any questions. Um, yeah.